This video is brought to you by Snake Snap, a downloadable app for your phone where you can submit a photo of any snake found in the United States or even here in Australia and get that photo identified by a real life expert. On top of that, she's chock a block full of loads of interesting information. So for more info, check out snakesnap.com, find them on Facebook or download the app today. G'day, g'day. It's Dick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And in today's video, I want to introduce you to this girl here, which has to be one of the most common snakes here in Southern Australia, and that is the Australian Copperhead. So stick around, guys. So here in Australia, we've got three species of copperhead. And this girl here is what we call the lowlands copperhead. So these guys are found in the island of Tasmania, here in Victoria from the South Australian border, all the way across the southern part of the state, and up into parts of New South Wales. Up the high country on the Victoria and New South Wales border, we've got the highlands or alpine copperhead. And over in South Australia on Kangaroo Island around the Adelaide Hills, we've got the third species, the pygmy copperhead. Now given the name of these guys, you could be forgiven for thinking that the Australian copperhead somehow related to the American copperhead, the species you get in the southern states of the US. But they're completely unrelated. The American copperhead is a member of the viper family, like the rattlesnakes and the pit vipers and the like. Whereas the Australian copperheads are a lapids, along with things like mambas and tiger snakes and cobras. So not related at all. On top of that, these guys here are about 50 times more venomous than the American copperhead. The American copperhead has an LD50 result. Basically, how much venom does it take to kill a certain prey item of about 25.6 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. The Australian copperhead, on the other hand, has an LD50 of about 0.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, which puts them about on par with the Indian cobra in terms of toxicity. So 50 times more venomous than the American copperhead. Despite the fact that the Australian copperhead is highly venomous, deaths are almost unheard of from this species. A few people are bitten from time to time, and uh, death's not impossible. It's a pretty venomous snake, and like I said, that Indian cobra kills tens of thousands of people a year. But here in Australia, they're a pretty shy species. They want to stay out of your way, and most of the bites that happen are things like cats and dogs that go out of their way to bother them. But if you are bitten, there's actually no such thing as copperhead venom. Whoa, hang on a second then. Of course there is such thing as copperhead venom. Copperheads have extremely potent venom. What I meant to say is there's no such thing as a specific copperhead anti venene here in Australia. A bite from a copperhead is treated with tiger snake anti venene So thanks to anti venene and these guys' general good natures, deaths are almost unheard of from the Australian copperhead. As far as habitat goes, the copperheads are all cold weather specialists. These guys are some of the most cold tolerant snakes in the country. There's even cases of copperheads coming out and basking on sunny days amongst the snow up in the high country. Like most of the cold tolerant snakes found here in Australia, the copperhead is a live bearing snake. The benefit of giving birth to live young rather than laying eggs is these guys essentially get to carry their babies in their stomach from warm place to warm place rather than being reliant on one place being the right temperature for 60 or 90 days. Egg laying snakes don't do as well in the cold as a live bear. And these guys have about 16 or so babies. They're born at the end of summer. They get to eat as much as they can before winter hits and they go down for their brumation. And uh, these guys have to be cold tolerant because at only a few months of age, these guys are going to experience their first winter. And that's a pretty hard time in any reptile's life. Now, due to the habitats that these guys are living in, generally they're associated with waterways down here in southern Australia. These guys, particularly as babies, are eating huge amounts of frogs and other reptiles like skinks and other snakes. These guys will even eat other copperheads. But as they grow up, they become more of a generalist. Copperheads will eat anything from mice to small rates. And in Tasmania, they've even been recorded eating wingless grasshoppers. So while they do like their frogs and skinks, they're still a bit of a generalist. They'll take whatever food they can find. Now, despite being one of the most abundant and commonly sighted snakes here in Southern Australia, the copperhead is often misidentified. I've even seen council signs with pictures calling them red belly black snakes. They often get dark with a nice sort of bright orange belly. And it doesn't help that they can be all sorts of colours. They can be plain brown, mistaken for brown snakes, 
They can be the sort of this color, dark grays with sort of browns and coppery colors to bright oranges. These guys are highly variable in color. They've often got that little bit of a stripe behind their head, but it's no guarantee. And they're a great example of why you shouldn't identify any snake based on color. So at the end of the day, you can see that this girl's a pretty relaxed and chilled out snake. Granted, she's a captive specimen, but the fact that she is as venomous as the Indian cobra, a snake which kills more than 10,000 people a year, she's a great example of why snakes aren't out to get us. These guys just wanna go out on their way. To get bitten by one of these guys, you've got to go out of your way to get bitten by one of these guys. Great way to stop your pets is teach your pets to avoid anything that they don't know. Teach them to avoid snakes and make sure they come back when they're called. If you see them grabbing something, you wanna know that they're gonna to come to you rather than you go and get involved. But we leave snakes alone, they're gonna leave us alone, and this girl is absolutely stunning. I wouldn't think Australia's Australia without. It. So to finish off guys, maybe leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Australian Copperhead and what snakes you'd like me to talk about next. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or like us on Facebook. Helps our audience grow bigger and bigger and reach more people. But the biggest thing you can do to help our videos get even better and get us to visit animals that we can't show you here at home is to support us on Patreon. We've got a growing audience of people there who contribute to us each month and their contributions are what helps us get to places like Darwin up the top end, visit wildlife carers and zoos, and show you some animals that I couldn't show you otherwise. The more animals we can visit, the more videos we can put out, the more people we can teach, and the more people are gonna love wildlife. That being said, as always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.